The Big City by Peter E. Homan Part 1 It had been two days since the Davos visit to the city, and while the neighborhood had changed a bit after the children's last adventure, one thing remained constant. The small reading lamp on Robert's desk, shining away until the early hours of the morning. He reached into his desk drawer and pulled out his trusty journal. It was hard to think that it was a mere six months earlier that father had given him this journal, and now it was already filled with marvelous adventures. He scanned the index page. A cursed diamond, he whispered, their very first adventure. He continued to scan the index and then stopped at the second to last entry, the golden egg. It was the peculiarly bland way in which the adventure ended that most pressed on his mind. He turned to the first page of that particular adventure and scanned the drawings he had made of the golden egg they had discovered, and of course, the small brass piece of metal contained within. Robert was still at his desk when Annie came barging into his room. She paused when she saw the boy bent over with his face stuck in the journal. Wake up, sleepyhead, Annie whispered as she gently tapped at the table. He remained motionless, but let out a low-pitched snore. Wake up, exclaimed Annie as she slammed her hand on the desk. Robert shot up as a loud noise reverberated through the table. What are you doing? he exclaimed. You nearly gave me a heart attack. You overslept said Annie, as she scanned the pages laid out in front of him. And I see why. I was just reading, said Robert, before hastily packing away his journal. You were obsessing about that egg again, weren't you? What can I help you with? said Robert bluntly. Mom said there was a surprise waiting for us in the living room, Annie said excitedly. Hurry up. Robert let out a loud yawn and stretched his arms and legs. He was cramping from his awkwardly positioned slumber, but after a few joints cracked, he was awake and followed his sister who had skipped off towards the living room. There you are, said Mother, who seemed to be dressed for a day out on the town. What's going on? asked Robert, as Father gave him a smile and indicated for him to come sit down. He was just about to broach the subject again when there came the familiar noise of a vehicle pulling up the driveway. Who's that? asked Robert, as Annie jumped up and ran towards the front door. It's the Bailey's, she exclaimed, as she flung the front door open and dashed towards Mr. Bailey's bucky. What are you doing here? Annie exclaimed as she pulled open the rear passenger door and helped Toomey out of her seat. Welcome, said Mother, as she greeted Mr. and Mrs. Bailey and invited them inside. We saw Ellie and Anton when they arrived back on the farm, and they told us about your adventure with the birds, said Timber. When my parents heard about the fun you had without us, they decided it was time to come and visit you guys in the city. Well, said Robert, this is definitely the best surprise I've had in a while. He extended his hand towards Timber, who met his in their typically determined fashion. Wait until we show you the treehouse, said Annie, as she wrapped her arm around Toomey's shoulder and led her towards the house. This really is a splendid treehouse, said Timber, as he and Toomey were shown around. And you can see across the entire neighborhood from here, said Annie, showing them the telescope. Anton told me that this was how you managed to solve the mystery surrounding some feather or something, said Timber. That's a long story, laughed Robert but I'll tell you about it a little later. They spent the next few hours catching up on what had been going on in each other's lives. Demba made the first team in rugby and cricket, and Toomey was beginning piano lessons. Her fingers were still a little stiff, but the teacher said she showed great promise. We'll strengthen up those fingers in no time, said Annie, who had developed her own routine of hand exercises to increase her grip whilst climbing. There was, of course, no definitive proof that the techniques worked, but she seemed to think so, which was good enough for the others. Are your kids ready for dinner? asked Mother from below the treehouse. Mr. Bailey brought an entire rack of lamb, which we're going to pry over the grill. That does sound delicious, said Annie, as they raced down the rope ladder to assist their fathers in getting the fire on the grill started.